last week on Legally Kidnapped. Good evening. Our top story this week, only a week after banning the Happy Meal toy, San Francisco, California considers a ban on circumcision by making it a misdemeanor to circumcise, excise, cut, or mutilate the genitals of a person under 18. Child advocates are calling for the head of Amazon.com CEO Jeff Bezos over their decision to sell objectionable material that promotes pedophilia. Social networking sites are causing problems for the core systems around the world as sealed and gagged information is being shared like crazy. You should also be careful of what you say because lawyers specializing in family law are increasingly turning to Facebook to gather dirt on their clients' opponents. And a 14-year-old girl from British Columbia, Canada gets busted for running a child prostitution ring by pimping herself and a few of her teenage friends on Craigslist. In Connecticut, Nodit finds widespread problems at the Department of Children and Families, including improper use of discretionary spending accounts and overpayments to service providers. Massachusetts is looking for new ways to improve its failure of a foster care system. And there's an estimated 12,000 homeless children in Mississippi. More and more children of deployed soldiers are seeking mental health care. Human rights groups are up in arms over the Obama administration's decision to exempt four countries known for using child soldiers from U.S. penalties. The Los Angeles Times is under fire for allegedly exaggerating the number of children who had died while under CPS watch. And in Iowa, the schools are under no legal obligation to report child abuse that is committed by teachers. Scientists from Georgetown University claim to have found a brain scan which can predict which kids will respond to talk therapy and which kids will need psych meds. And a study from the North Carolina State University finds children who are born in the summer are more likely to be diagnosed with ADHD than kids born later in the year. In India this week, there is a high demand for competent social workers, thus leaving all of ours out. Nineteen children rescued from an orphanage are still at the mercy of the Indian child welfare system being forced to live in government-run homes and miss school. And an expert wants to implement a public relations campaign aimed at finding more adoptive parents in India. In Russia, a pair of foster parents stand trial on child harassment. A new report from Scotland claims that three out of four kids in foster care will have a criminal conviction by age 22. And Ireland can't celebrate the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child's 21st Anniversary because of their continued failure to protect children. In Australia, two parents get permission from the court to castrate their two sons who were born with a rare genetic mutation. And a change in the rules makes it so cops are no longer calling in every little thing to the child abuse hotline, but only cases where kids are actually at risk of harm. Due to staffing shortages caused by better opportunities practically everywhere else, more than 1,200 at-risk children in Victoria are without a caseworker. Real mothers who were bullied into giving up their newborns for adoption in New South Wales back in the late 60s, early 70s are demanding an apology from the Australian government. And due to shortages of foster care providers, about half of the young girls in homeless shelter in Hobart are wards of the state. In England this week, a cop is appointed as chief executive of the Child Exploitation and Online Protection Center. The British Justice Minister proposes cutting legal aid to the poor in family court cases such as divorces and child contact proceedings. And according to the Office of National Statistics, Great Britain currently has one of the highest dropout rates among industrialized nations. A mother from India kills her severely autistic son just hours after being told that he was going to be taken into care by British social workers. And a 10-day-old baby is snatched from his mother when a little bump on the head was misdiagnosed as child abuse. In a desperate attempt to meet adoption quotas, as the UK sees an increase of online child advertising. This because adoption numbers are dropping in the UK as Christian adoption agencies are being forced to close because of their refusal to support homosexuality, leaving only 770 forced adoptions against parental consent in Wales in the last five years. And the Kent County Council apologizes for inadequate children's care after a damning Ofsted report reveals that they are still failing children. In Canada this week, a US citizen mother who is married to a Canadian and has three Canadian children children is told to leave the country. In Newfoundland, they've stolen so many kids that they're going broke from having to keep them all in motel rooms. Canada preaches new fears over the lack of proper assessments done on kinship placements. And a new study reveals that only one out of 20 elementary school teachers in Canada is male, and the main reason for this is that men don't want to be accused of being pedophiles. In entertainment news this week, Mel Gibson admits to slapping his ex-girlfriend. Then his sealed case file was stolen and sold to TMZ. And now Mel is filing for full 
custody based on Oksama's flapping her lips on the Larry King live show against the judge's orders that she should not talk to the media. A judge in the Jesse James custody case refuses to transfer the case to Texas. Teen Mom star Amber Portwood is charged with felony domestic violence for beating Gary. And a source tells US Magazine that food conservationist Kate Gosling sends her kid to school with the same half-eaten peanut butter and jelly sandwich for lunch for up to five days in a row. In Utah, a jury awards $6.1 million to the family of a girl who died in a gas can explosion from the manufacturer after the father dumped gas on a wood stove fire in a trailer. A woman from Connecticut is suing the child protective industry after being raped while in foster care by a basketball player. And two kids from Ohio who were forced to sleep in cages by their adoptive parents are suing the psychologist in the counseling center that approved the adoption. In this week's Foster Crimes Report, a former juvenile justice counselor from New York gets three years in jail and three years probation after a judge rejected his jail-free plea deal for sexually abusing three underage girls in his care. A 72-year-old Catholic monk has been arrested for abusing a 16-year-old at a group home for troubled boys. And a Saratoga County psychiatrist who did work for the family courts gets busted for faking his credentials. A foster parent from Harpenden, England pleads guilty to sexually abusing boys in his care and escapes a prison sentence. A foster parent from Tennessee is busted for having sexual encounters with a 16-year-old girl in his home. In Florida, a woman who pretended to be a social worker so she could kidnap someone's kid after faking a pregnancy for months pleads guilty and could get up to 40 years in jail. A foster parent from Georgia gets busted for the murder of a 20-month-old child in his care. An adoptive mother from Oklahoma agrees to life in prison after pleading guilty for beating her 3-year-old adopted son to death. And a former foster mother from Michigan gets 6 to 15 years in jail for abusing a child in her care. A father from South Carolina finally gets his daughter back after fighting for two years to get her out of the New York foster care system. A former gymnastics coach from Illinois who had his child molestation conviction overturned and was granted a new trial gets custody of his children after his ex-wife was declared unfit. In Missouri, the Supreme Court hears a case and must decide if the child protective industry will return a four-year-old to his immigrant mother after he had been adopted out from under her while she was in jail awaiting deportation. A very stupid Norwich man is arrested after an alleged sexual attack on a social worker who is coming to see his children. In Indiana, the adopted daughter of the Hancock County Sheriff is arrested for burning a child's hands. And a 16-year-old girl from Ohio gets arrested for bringing a knife to school for protection after a fight and threats from her foster sister. In Florida, a mistrial is declared in the sexual abuse case after one of the jurors failed to disclose that he used to be a child abuse investigator for DCF. A pair of foster parents is upset and questioning the Department of Children and Families' decisions to return their foster children to their biological mother. Hundreds of Florida foster children have been sent to summer camps run by convicted criminals. And a real mother from Florida achieves the rare feat of adopting her own biological daughter from the foster care system. A couple of wackos from Missouri have put up a website letting you, the people, vote on whether or not they have a baby or get an abortion. And finally tonight, a social worker from Alaska goes to a school and snatches the wrong kids, causing the mother to nearly have a heart attack. For these stories and all the latest dirt on the child protective industry, visit www.legallykidnapped.com. And until next week, this is Baby LK, over and out.